Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for um, thank you, Lord, for leading uh, in regards to the worship, Lord. Mm -hmm. That I know we might look at it as as uh, maybe not as as well as should be done. But God, when it's um, when we do it from our heart, Lord, Amen. when we really um, embrace what the words say, Amen. God, that's all that matters to you. Yes, that's all that matters. Now we're not perfect, mm -hmm. but you are. Mm -hmm. So, Lord, we thank you so much, Lord. I pray that you would give us all ears to hear uh, from your word, Lord. I pray that you would allow me to convey your heart. Help me to convey with clarity, Lord, with speech, Lord. Help me, to, Lord, not to lose anybody here, Lord, in regards to uh, conveying this message, Lord. Please, God. Um, please, God, let me represent you well in Jesus' name. Amen. So, um, the title is Believing a Lie. That's the title. Um, why, why am I teaching this? Why am I? Well, I felt like, um, I hope, it's like God allowed me to vent a little <laughs> bit, but using his word, not doing it personally, but doing it from his word, but do it with a sense of the Holy Spirit. Um, there's such... And this is something we're battling right now. This is a serious warfare that we're going on. Yep. It's serious. Yep. Because I think it's reminiscent in some ways of what took place 250 years ago. Um, there's so much disinformation out there and deception. It's so prevalent. It's mm -hmm. so in your face. There's no like, there's nobody had, it's like so many people in power, in powerful positions in government, in the media, wherever place, they're so powerful that they can lie and they don't care. They don't even, they don't even like, I said it, it's like, it's true. It's how they, it's how they believe. But from, I'm not taking any position in the sense of, as it was during the revolution or also don't, but from the pulpit during the time of the revolution, there was indictments against the king. There was indictments that were presented from the pulpit to the king of England. And so this is something reminiscent of it because the indict the the pulpit was helping the nation to reach out to the king that the king would say okay you come to a census we have treated the colonies wrong that's what the, that's what that's what the founders wanted they don't want war with you they don't want to they don't want the war with amongst the cities and the townships within the colonies they knew that that there would be a high cost of blood that would be shed that was the furthest thing from the mind. They wanted to hand out olive branches. There was an olive branch continually to the king saying, cut, please. We are your subjects. We want to be your subjects. We want to continue to do that. We want to be able to be a blessing to our, our motherland or the father, whatever they used in regards to England. They didn't want to break away. They were forced to. Um, so they, from the pulpit, presented grievances against the king. That that the, the founders used to petition the king. It was from the pulpit that it all began. Hmm. So to me, it's as if the church, God's word, has indictments against what's taking place within hmm. this government that was formed hmm. and fashioned by men who were directed by God and how uniquely it was created. It's not perfect, but boy, is it pretty close in regards to the sense of other types of forms of government that fail, that fall apart. They don't hold. There's, I think there's like hundreds of republics that have been established since the revolution. They're all gone. Every single one. They're, they've drawn up other uh, declarations or other constitutions repeatedly because they, because it constantly changes. And, but America's constitution has stood, stood has stood uh, strong because it was founded upon principles that were biblically based. It was not based upon. The French, it wasn't based upon England, it wasn't based upon those parliamentary governments. It was based upon a unique constitutional republic. Does America does America seem to be becoming a people of the lie? Our nation's establishment, our so-called leaders in government, education, and the media have lied so often to us and even to themselves that they have come to believe their own deception. The, de the defect of evil is not just the sin. But the refusal to acknowledge it, that's the big thing. Not able to acknowledge what they're doing. They're not willing to, or they're not capable of, or God has given them over to reprobate. Mm -hmm. 
lies and now what is defining lies are now what is defining us as Americans. The deception of lies have become remarkably consistent. This is because there may be a line that has been crossed. We now tolerate our own sinfulness. We tolerate the disinformation. We tolerate the lies from the enemy. He's the father of lies. He's the one who's doing all this. The father of lies. The lies being told is designed not so much to deceive others, but to deceive ourselves. That's what it's all about. It's not, it's not just to deceive others, but to deceive ourselves. They're deceiving themselves. They purposely are doing it because they chose to believe a lie. We, we lie only when we are tempted to cover up something we know to be wrong. Mm -hmm. Our nation is in a sea of deception. Proponents of critical race theory say they're fighting racism while displaying their own racism. Right. These are the indictments. Champions of the alphabet people lecture us about choice while demanding it should be illegal for counselors to help people and change their destructive behavior. So they want them to stay in their chaos. They want them to stay in their, what they've become or what they're chosen to do. Mm -hmm. Feminists pretend to, pret feminists pretend to stand for female rights while not being able to define what a woman is. <laughs> That's the insanity of it all. These are the indictments against the truth. The truth of God says this. This is what a woman, this is what a man is. And the church is basically, the word of God is calling it all out. Black Lives Matter shouts all black lives must matter while applauding the butchery of millions of black babies by the hands of people who look at that life as disposable That's an indictment. Schools call we fight to protect, who fight to protect their children from the horror of perverseness of child abuse. What is male and female as being a choice at a young age? N double uh, NCAA National um, College Association of Athletics says that male athletes who claim to be women are now able to compete unfairly in a competition. Liberals who pretend to care about this country and the constitution that helps govern it, declare it in their next breath that our country's ideas are racist. Advocates of my body, my choice to you and me, it's not your choice to say you can't force me to take the jab. So it's like they can force, right. it's like leave my body alone, just baby, I wanna, if I wanna kill it, go ahead. But it's like, you gotta, you gotta take the jab. Dr. Fauci boasts, I am being uh, supported by science, by what, by what I say, while scolding anyone who disagrees or questions him. Follow the science means challenge the narrative to see if it is true. That's what science is. It's like, you don't just, somebody says it, you challenge it, you investigate, you understand it. People who don't believe in absolutes say there are absolutely, for sure, there are no absolutes. <laughs> that's the lunacy of it all people who love and support Marxism and socialism are good for us but leave out in its wake 300 million people have died it's all a lie these are all things that are coming into our government already here or in our society the proverb or pro proverbial the emperor has no clothes <laughs> on as an entire nation stands and watches and supports the insanity. It's like, that's, that's how it is. It's like nobody, the media says this, the government says this, and there's a few people out there that are actually saying something. But it's like, there's few, there's few, but it's like everybody else is going, you say it's all good. You believe whatever the government says or the media says. May America wake up to the church who still has eyes to see and ears to hear and the courage to speak. Oh, pray to God for this remnant. And this is something that Debbie and I were talking about. One man can change the world Amen. with an arrow of truth Amen. that will kill the lie. Amen. Those are like those I want you to think about. Those are these are things that should be addressed from the pulpit. This is what is, is infiltrating our homes, our families. The media, magazines, it's an assault from 
all directions, all directions. It's like you said, John, it's like you stood here, it's like, thank God that I was young when I was in school at the time I was. Then uh, we can go back, like, I wish I was with my parents or my, my mom and dad back in the late 40s and early 50s. It's like, that was even better. Um, but we, 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 it was, yeah. uh, it was, it was yeah. a good time yeah. as we look back, mm -hmm. even in the time that we're in, right? Mm -hmm. We talk about it a lot. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so let's turn to second Thessalonians chapter two. Ten through eleven, or ten through twelve. Second Thessalonians chapter two, ten through eleven. He will completely fool those. I'm living. This is living translation. He will completely fool those who are on their way to hell because they have said no to the truth. They have refused to believe it and love it. Let it save them. Eleven. So God will allow them to believe lies with all their hearts, and all of them will be justly judged for being a false. For believing falsely, refusing the truth, and enjoying their sin. Lying is telling an untruth, a half truth, or even being silent, staying silent under certain circumstances. Under certain circumstances, that's what's happening too. It's like there's the media who's supposed to be standing, supposed to put, supposed to be at the fourth check against the three branches of the government. The media is supposed to be doing that because that's why there's freedom of the press. Is that the, the media is supposed to call out the lunacy, the insanity, and the craziness uh, of, of those three branches in the media so the people are informed. Mm -hmm. And when they're silent, they lie because they're in cahoots with it. Mm -hmm. the old if we are not careful, we can fall into these lies. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 5, if you'd like to turn there, mm -hmm. King James. Six and seven. <laughs> Let no man deceive you with vain, empty words, for because of these things comes the wrath of God upon the children of obedience. Yes, that, I'm sorry, thank you. Disobedience. <laughs> Be not you, therefore, partakers of partners with them. Did you catch it? Yeah, I want you to catch every word. Let no man deceive you with vain, empty words. This is all going to pertain to the teaching when I get into it. For because of these things comes the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not you, therefore, partakers with them. God is saying, don't do it. Don't be a part of it. Don't be um, out. Uh, Ephesians 4, 25, King James. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Proverbs 23, 23. If you'd like to turn there, hopefully, hopefully, uh, you guys do it. This is one verse. Proverbs 23, 23, King James. God is saying, by the truth, Buy the truth, purchase it, and sell it not. Mm -hmm. Also, wisdom and instruction and understanding. God is saying, God is saying it very plainly. Mm -hmm. And then Revelation 21, King James. Revelation 21, all the way in the front, six and eight. Give you a sec sec second to get there. Revelation 21, 6, 8. And he said to me, it is done. I am Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give to him that is thirsty of the fountain of the water of life. Amen. Amen. He that overcomes shall inherit all things. And I will be his God and he shall be my son. 
but the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable, causing moral distrust and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Think about that. I hear people that, that says, uh, do you fear, uh, since you're a sinner, do you, go, do you fear heaven? I mean, do you fear hell, going to hell? No. It's like, really? Catch this. They'll have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Eternal fire. That's what God is saying. The lies and deception, this is what the world believes. It accepts the lie that religious liberty, freedom, means the belief, whatever the desire is, that as long as there are true to this belief. So the, what, they're, what the world thinks about basically religious freedom, they're good with it. If you believe something different, but you really believe it, you firmly believe it, and it's, oh, it's just all with all my might, all my strength. They're, they're adamant about their belief system. The world is good with that. Because it's a lot. Mm -hmm. Because Wendy's will be different from yours. Mm -hmm. And it's like, the, who's, who's, the, who's the, the, the deceiver in all this? The enemy. Satan. He's, he wants, he's good with that. But once you start believing in the truth of God, mm -hmm. the whole, as being absolute, oh, he's at war with that. Mm -hmm. This is where, this is where conflict Amen. comes Amen. in. This is where conflict comes in. Think about, think about this indictment against government. The Speaker of the House, knowing the church she holds dear, is in opposition with her perversion. She's in, she believes and speaks of the, her, her relationship with the church. Oh, it's just oh, I'm a Catholic, and this and that. And it's like she believes the lie. She, she can actually be contrary to what, her, what she's so proud about, but she's a hypocrite. In, the, in, in what the church doctrine proclaims in regards to the gender issues, the, the things of abortion, the list is long. She believes in the perversion of the, child, of the children being taught from kindergarten on. It's like, really? It's like, and you call yourself the so-called Catholic? Mm. On life and what a man is and what a woman is, their roles in the family unit, the list is long and wicked. We do have freedom to believe and do as we please, but that does not mean that it is acceptable to God that we all would agree with that. Mm -hmm. Christian freedom is not a license to believe and obey lives. Mm -hmm. it's, Christian freedom is to know the truth, Amen. to abide in the truth, Amen. and walk in the truth. Amen. Galatians 5.13, if you like to turn there, mm -hmm. King James, Galatians 5.13. For brethren, you have been called to liberty. God is constantly saying that. Mm -hmm. Why would the founding fathers keep proclaiming liberty in the land? Why would they keep talking about freedom? It was not a perversion to, it was not a freedom to perversion as it is today. The, the, the freedom that they so richly loved and, and desired and wanted it from the king because they still wanted to be um, loyal subjects to him and to the to the crown they just wanted to live in freedom mm -hmm. they wanted to live in a life in a land that, that was dedicated to christ that's all they wanted mm -hmm. 513 for brethren you have been called to liberty only use not liberty for the occasion to the flesh to do wrong but by love serve one another simple that's what the founders Amen. wanted to do. That's what, the, that's what the American idea is. That's what the foundation of America is. That's what it's rooted in. And there's an assault upon our past. There's an assault from the school, from schools, from the educational system, from the universities, colleges, from government, from the halls of government itself, attacking what America's principles were. Yes, we made mistakes. We all acknowledge that. We learn from those mistakes. It's like you just don't. That's the accuser. The accuser keeps constantly accusing us of the wrong we've done in the past instead of saying, look where we've come so far. Many of the world believe this lie that it makes very little difference in matters of faith what a man believes so long as he's sincere in what he believes. Lunacy. Because people get hurt. People die. 
I want you to think about that. The same is true in the matter of government, of science, and waging of war. It's something that we'll get to. Believing a lie that government is the answer to the problems we face. Ronald Reagan said, government is the problem. Back in, back in the 70s, he said that government is the problem. It's not the answer to your problems. <clears throat> If Congress would just go away for a while, there's another quote he says, we wouldn't miss it. We wouldn't miss the government. Mm. If, uh, there's something that when we, Debbie and I went to Nevada, we were, we were visiting our daughter uh, up in Reno, and we went to the Capitol, and they only meet for a certain short months. Then they go home and go, go to work. They meet during certain times of the, of the year. It's like in the spring, and they meet in the fall. That's it. And a lot of states do that. They don't, they're not full-time legislators. Mm. It's fascinating because there, when we went there, there's nobody there. It was in. Wow. And we're yeah. like, when do they show up? And it's like, oh, they show up in about a few months from now. <laughs> <laughs> they get all, everything in order. And then they, then they, they wow. pick it up next, uh, next month. It's interesting. Mm. So in a way, they're not professional politicians yeah. as the founders didn't want. They wanted people to basically serve their government and go back to farming or whatever, whatever they were part of, pastoring, whatever things they used to serve for a period of time, and then people would come in. Mm. That kept people from the corruption that would so infiltrate power, political power. It set up the people to protect our freedoms written for our founding documents. So we would never miss them because they really don't accomplish what it was set up for. So they never accomplished anything, really. It's like these people are full-time uh, service in regards to, and they'll go, they'll go home for Christmas and they'll go, they'll go home for whatever breaks they have and stuff like that. But it's like, it's full-time, they're there. And it's like, they never accomplish anything. Mm -hmm. And their only goal is to protect our freedoms. That was what government was set up for. It was not to, um, to dictate or to actually enforce upon the people. The laws that have been in place, the Constitution, the Declaration of, uh, of Independence, uh, Declaration of Independence, and the Bill of Rights are guaranteed rights that we've been given. And their the government's position, uh, goal and position that the founders gave them is to protect those rights. Mm -hmm. That's it. It's gotten complicated along the way. Mm -hmm. The false claims of the man and woman of today's science, of the false claims of the men and women in today's science that evolution and climate change is America's responsibility, true, um, is it true to change and that it will save the world crazy. So I want you, to, I'm not saying this right, but it's the false claims that men and women of science that evolution and climate change is America's responsi responsibility. That's what's happening right now. So you got all these nations, China, India, Mexico, the list is long. It's like, they're just heavy polluters. And they're thinking that America is gonna be the one that's gonna solve the problem by shutting it down. China is like three times as much heavy polluter as the United States. And they think that, that we, by shutting down our government, it's going to bring healing to the climate. And it comes, of course, we all know the climate change, uh, global warming, the list goes on, the ozone, they don't talk about that stuff anymore. So whatever. It's crazy, it's lunacy, and it's insanity. Because if they truly want to make a difference, by what I said, by shutting down China, India, Mexico, the oil-burning nations that just have no regulations as we do, and force them and force them to go and to convert to green policies. Of course, it won't happen. The world power's desire is to destroy what? The idea of America. That's the truth of the matter. Because no other nation in the world, other than Israel, when it was during the times of the biblical days, and America is unique in all of history in how it was founded. Yes, we made mistakes, but every nation has. Mm -hmm. That's why they no longer stand. We got Rome, we got Greece, we got all the, the great um, uh, 
world powers throughout world history, they're gone. They're no longer here, but America still stands. It's the longing, longest government, longest republic, Republican type government that still exists and never had any trans, never had uh, a renewal of its constitution where it had to be redone because of the people's ideas were changing and stuff like that. It's like, no, these are rooted on biblical truths because that's why they stand. <laughs> What the miracle of, Amer of American idea is and what it represents, that it was that it was, the idea was birthed in liberty that the Bible talks about, is what stands in the way of the world's tyrannical form being imposed upon the world that is to come according to God's word, because that's what God's word says, that there's going to be a world order. There's going to be where everything's cast to the side, everything's going to be destroyed. All those things that have been in place are in the way. There are, they are in the way for this world government to come into play. That's what the Bible says. I'm not saying it's tomorrow. I'm not saying anything like that, but that's what the Bible says. The Bible says that, but who stands in the way? That's all I'm saying here. Who stands in the way? The American idea. That's my thoughts. Believing the deception, the lie being brought <coughs> upon us, it stops us in the knowledge we would receive if we would just acknowledge God and who he is. Return to the true meaning of the fear of the Lord. And the last one, waging war. Why would I bring that up? Because believing a lie, a leader, may lead its people ultimately to destruction. Mm -hmm. And it happens every when they are tyrannical, when they have nothing of God within their hearts and within the government, it brings destruction. The list is long of nations that have done that. I don't want to get into that stuff, but it's like that list is long. This truth. This, this is true in the matters of the soul. Going back to 2 Thessalonians 2, 10 through 12. And I'm going to read it again. With all deceivable, deceivableness, deception of unrighteousness in them that perish. Because, this is King James, because I read it in the Living Translation before. Because they grieved, I'm sorry, because they received not the love of the truth, that they be saved. So I'm going to start again. And with all deceivable, deceivableness, <laughs> deception of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they be saved, 11, and for this cause God send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. God allows those who do not love the truth that mm -hmm. they themselves are responsible for the error they love. 12, and all of them will be justly judged for being for believing falsehoods, refusing the truth, and enjoying their sins. All of this is contrary, mm -hmm. absolutely, to the word of God. Mm -hmm. Belief of the truth alone leads to love of the truth and to the practice of righteousness, which mm -hmm. God's truth always demands. So I want you to get that. Belief of the truth, believing alone leads to the love of it it's just like our faith we like we believe in god we believe in what he did what he sent his son to do he died on the cross he rose again we believe then we start to love we start to love with what he had done what, what he what he what he experienced for our sake question how are we to discern the truth when man says one thing and God says another, God always gives us a clear choice between the two. And this is where we're going to go to 1 Kings chapter 13. I'm going to get you there. Let's go, go to 1 Kings chapter 13. <clears throat> Here's a lesson to be learned that, that I caught. That's a good one. God is after something. What was that? 
First Kings 13. We're going to start in verse 1 and read to verse 30. Okay. As Jeroboam approached the altar to burn incense to the golden calf idol, the prophet of the Lord from Judah walked up to him. Then, at the Lord's command, the prophet shouted in this living translation. O altar, the Lord says, that a child named Josiah shall be born into the family line of David, and he shall sacrifice upon you the priests from the shrines on the hill who come here to burn incense, and men's bones shall be burned upon you. Verse 3. Then he gave this proof that his message from, was from the Lord. This altar will split apart, and the ashes on it will spill to the ground. For the king was very angry with the prophet for this, saying, he shouted to his guards, arrest, the, arrest, arrest that man, and shook his fist at him. Instantly, the king's arm became paralyzed in that position. He couldn't pull it back again. Five. At the same moment, a wide crack appeared in the altar, and the ashes poured out, just as the prophet had said would happen. For this was the prophet's proof that God had been speaking through him. Six. Oh, please, please, the king cried out to the prophet, beg the Lord your God to restore my arm again. So he prayed to the Lord, and the king's arm became normal again. Seven. Then the king said to the prophet, come to the palace with me and rest a while and have some food, and I'll give you a reward because you healed my arm. But the prophet said to the king, even if you gave me half your palace, I wouldn't go into it, nor would I eat or drink even the water in this place for the Lord. This is key. Nine. For the Lord has given me strict orders not to eat anything, to drink any water while I'm here, and not to return to Judea by the, by the road I came on. Ten. So we went back another way. As it happened, there was an old prophet living in Bethel, and his sons went home and told him what the prophet, which was a younger guy, from Judea had done, and what he had said to the king. Which, which way did he go? The old prophet asked. So they told him, quick, saddle a donkey, uh, the old man said, and when they had saddled the donkey for him, he rode after the prophet and found him sitting under an oak tree. Are you the prophet who came from Judea? He asked him. Yes, he replied, I am. Then the old man said to the prophet, come home with me and eat. The young prophet said, no, he replied, I can't, for I am not allowed to eat anything or drink any water at Bethel. The Lord strictly warned me against it. And he has told me not to return home by the same road I came on. The old man said, I am a prophet too, just as you are. And the angel gave me a message from the Lord. I am to take you home with me and give you food and water. But the old man was lying to him. So they went back together. And so the young prophet listened. So the old, so they went back together and the prophet ate some food and drank some water at the old man's home. 20. Then suddenly, while they were sitting at the table, a message from the Lord came to the old man. And he shouted at the prophet of Judea. The Lord says that because you have been disobedient to this clear man, and have come here and have eaten and drunk water in the place he told you not to, therefore your body shall not be carried in the grave of your fathers. After finishing the meal, the old man saddled the donkeys, the prophet's donkey, and the prophet started off again. But as he was traveling along, a lion came out and killed him. His body lay there on the road, with the donkey and the lion standing beside it. Those who came by and saw the body lying in the road, and the lion standing quietly beside it, mm. reported it to Bethel, where the old man, old prophet, lived. 26. Then he heard what had happened. He exclaimed, it is the prophet who disobeyed the Lord's command. The Lord fulfilled his warning by causing the, the lion to kill him. Then he said to his son, saddle my donkey, and they did. 28. He found the, the prophet's body lying in the road, and the donkey and the lion were still standing there beside it. For the lion had not eaten the body, nor attacked the donkey. 29. So the prophet laid the body upon the donkey. And he took it back to the city to mourn over it and to bury it. Here is a young man of God to be admired, right? <coughs> well, what he did. He was courageous. He was obedient, obedient to what God had directed him to do. Going back to the verse, uh, the beginning of chapter 13. He was unafraid of the power of the king. The young prophet had no worldly ambition. He did not 
fall for the king's invitation, even as he said, if you give me half your palace, I won't do it. He would not partake in eating, drinking, eating or drinking, because the Lord had commanded him very clearly. In verse 11, another prophet, that older one, lied to get him to come to eat and drink with him. The young prophet refused the temptation of the king's flattery to come and dine with him. And now he's accepting the invitation of the older prophet, forgetting what the Lord had told him directly. Think about this. Just think about this story, what is happening. This is a guy who's basically he's like, well, I'm a prophet. I, I worship the same guy. Listen to me. I think, you know, it's like, just come with me. It's like, it's going to be fine. In verses 21, 22, a message from the Lord came to the old prophet. And the Lord says that because you have been disobedient to this clear command of the Lord and have eaten and drank the water in the place he told you not to, he was not to be buried with his fathers. It was a tragic end to this young prophet that didn't remember, that's the key, didn't remember what the Lord directly had said to him. Mm. He listened to a false prophet. Not a false prophet, I should right. forgive me. But he listened to somebody who lied. Scripture says he lied on purpose. And it's, there's a reason why we'll get to that. It's a tragic end to this young prophet who was old before uh, Jehovah. Uh, I'm sorry, Jehovah. Jehovah. Yeah, he, he was very, he was very bold, very clear. He said, "I don't want any of your power. I don't want to have anything to do with you. I'm giving you a message from God. I'm gone and leaving." Basically, he was strong. He was bold. He was not fearful what the king could do to him. The king was angry. God stopped him from. From reaching out and um, uh, striking him, and then he killed him, the young prophet did. And then the king enticed him, enticed him to come and, and drink with him. And instead of being flattered by the king, he's like, wow. The king is like, oh, that's a change of heart and told me. <laughs> it's like, I'll just come home with him. We'll celebrate. He's like, no, I'm going home because God told me to go that's home. Right. How can we determine the determine truth? Think about this. Something sometimes lies have the same effect as truth. How is that? You may ask. If anyone hears the truth and obeys it, he then feels secure and safe. True. <laughs> However, some have heard a lie, believed the lie, then obeyed the lie, and have felt safe and secure. The truth. That's what people are doing right now. They feel secure in the lie. They got, they have no, no, they have no like conscience of of what what could come out of the disobedience and the lie. How it's affecting other people. How it's affecting him and, and their families. And, and every every facet of life is being affected. However, some have heard the lie and believe a lie and then obeyed the lie and have felt safe and secure. Going back to the old prophet and the young one, the young prophet didn't seem to hesitate. He felt secure. Think about this. That this man, the prophet, the older prophet, would not mislead him. That's right. He wouldn't lie to him. He wouldn't lie to him. But he did because the older just wanted his company. That's pretty obvious. After what he did and how he spoke to the king, was it envy? Whatever it was, it was a lie. God used it to test it mm -hmm. and, to te and to show us. Mm -hmm. This is how we are to remember this. We ought to remember, above all, what the Lord directly says to us. We hope, and it's always through this. Mm -hmm. The lessons that are learned through here, is what keeps us safe. And Amen. Amen. It's not what man can tell us. Amen. A prophet, a church member, a pastor, a priest, whatever, has to line up with this. Has to absolutely. We will not be deceived. It's like being a Berean. And not what man may say 
here is a response. I pray with the Holy Spirit's help that we would, we would ought to say. I suppose that you are a prophet, as you claim to be. But one thing I'm certain, and that is that God has commanded me not to be a murderer. Amen. I just always do respect. <laughs> I say that all due respect um, in this place. And I will only trust him. Mm -hmm. that just rings mm -hmm. of freedom Amen. Amen. that for me that mm -hmm. so rings of liberty mm -hmm. that's what it's all about mm -hmm. this is the freedom that god that god speaks about mm -hmm. and the freedom that i believe the founders touched upon mm -hmm. even if all the prophets on earth were to tell me otherwise so all the prophets mm -hmm. of the world every mm -hmm. single mm -hmm. one is like hey steve Hey, this <laughs> don't you know who I am? Such a determination to obey God only Come on. would have Amen. saved him Amen. from all that happened to him. It's all if he had such that such determination that he had with the king, as if he would have had with the prophet. Amen. Romans 15, 4. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> oh, wow. 15 4. For whatever things are were written before time, this is the key. This is why we're talking about this right now. Why I brought up uh, uh, 1 Kings 13. For whatever things were written before time were written for our learning. That we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, Amen. might have hope. Amen. We have a hope. We have hope because of the lessons that we learn of what scripture is telling us and how God wants to make us. He wants it, everything to be clear to us. He's not the deceiver. He's not, a de he's not into deception. He's not into lies. He just wants us to hear from him. Listen Amen. to him. Amen. 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 <laughs> There is abundance of examples to show the sin of lying and the consequences which always follow. We need to know through this example the lesson of believing a lie and forgetting what the, the word of God at its final. In Romans 3, verse 4, if you like to go there. <clears throat> Romans 3, verse 4. God forbid. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that you might be justified in your sayings and might overcome when you are judged. There are teachers of all sorts, politicians and government and the power of the media and all its forms telling us they know more than I and you mm -hmm. do about truth. Mm -hmm. That God's word ought not to have any authority that it once had. We are much better without it. One lie after another. And that's what the media is telling us. Government is telling us. We you don't need the word of God. You don't need the word of God to, to govern our children. To guide them. In the attributes of God. The Ten Commandments. The, the things that would set families in order forever. The commandments. Yeah. And training up your children and to be able to to grow in, 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 into young uh, into teenagers into young adulthood and things like that it's like you always have the word of God and it will not return void it will always you're always uh, it'll always be something your children will remember mm -hmm. true biblical teachers the Ten Commandments they say, are not acceptable to be taught in schools. That's what they're doing. That's what they've done back in 63. Prayer out of school, it's gone. Ten Commandments out, gone. It's like, really? The holy teachings of God have been taken out? This one that doesn't, there is one that doesn't want these truths to be taught. And who is that? The father of lies. Satan is his name. That is 
who is behind every teacher of our children who teaches otherwise, who believes otherwise, that it's all about psychology. This is what we're up against. Every government official, all, almost every form of the media that hates the power of God through his word. That's what it boils down to. That's who's behind, behind all the deception, all the lies. So it's like as a church, instead of getting angry and it's like, it's like we get frustrated because now we're battling what we're seeing with our eyes, but we don't battle it. It's, it's just, it's, it's, it's spiritual, right? That's what we're battling against. It's like, now we know our enemy. We know our enemy, who he is. He's the deceiver. They are representing that, of representing that, every single one. In 1 Timothy 4.16, Living Translation, <clears throat> You like to turn there? First Timothy 4:16. It reads, God's word reads, keep a close watch on all you think. Stay true to what is right. And God will bless you and use you to help others. Amen. And then first Timothy 4:6. So this is First Timothy 4, 6. And this is something that really is powerful to me when I first heard this. Uh, when I read it and then heard it in a message, take heed, be careful to yourself and to the doctrine, the teaching of the truth, and continue in them. For in doing this, you shall both save yourself and them. Amen. That's the, that's just so beautiful, and that's it's such a challenge upon the church itself, and upon every pastor, everybody who teaches. God is saying, "Take heed, be careful to yourself and to the doctrine, the teaching of the teaching of the truth, the doctrine, and continue in them." God is warning the pastors. God is warning the church. Take heed, be careful, for in doing this, you shall save both yourself. And them that hear you, well, that's the responsibility of what the person who stands in the pulpit. Mm-hmm. It's like, that's who you're, you better be careful. God is saying, be careful. Be careful. Don't fall into the lies. Don't be deceived by what people say to you, things like that. Listen to what I have to say to you. Don't believe any lie. As long as it lines up with, this, with, with God's word, care what the media says, what teachers tell you, what the government t- tells you. Nothing is wrong. It's the word of God that will not mislead you. So again, the teaching, what was the teaching on? Thank you. That's right. So don't believe the lie. God is saying, I am clear. So you will not fall into error. Mm. So Father God, I just thank you so much, Lord, for your word. God, I pray that, that you would allow us, Lord, to take away from this message. I know we believe in everything. I know we do. And it's like, oh, you know, I've heard of this before. I've already heard it. But it's like, no. You need to understand, God is saying, we need to understand that there are indictments against these falsehoods. And God, they will not get away with it. And God wants these indictments to be clear to the church and to this nation. So it will repent. It's not, it's not, it's not going to be swift and quick because we would ever be judged but but in the, with the wrath of god that's that's a time that god has appointed but god we just thank you so much lord that you want your church to be right you want mm-hmm. your children to be right you want this nation to return to its values i believe lord because they're so rooted in judeo-christian values their the rights that are given it says by our founders the rights that ought not to be taken away, that should never be challenged, that should never be uh, erased. Um, and they're talking about it today, Lord. They're talking about these rights are not secure, that they're not revocable. They're talking as, as blatantly clear as it can be, talking about the, about the unborn and how it's not alive. And then they say it is alive, but... You know, now we can take it all the way to nine nine months, and then maybe even after. It's like that's where they're gone. 
-hmm. It's not hidden. It's as clear as it can be. They want they want this incredible depravity to be prevalent without it within our country. And God, it will it will implode. It will fall apart because you will cause that to happen. But God, you, with the ideas, the American idea, the American experiment, God is an experiment. The founding fathers thought it was an experiment. They didn't know for sure it was going to work. They didn't know. That's why they called it what they called it. But we gave it, we gave to this country, we gave it to this land that maybe there's a chance. Maybe there's a chance. That God, there's always, there always will be your kingdom. Mm -hmm. God, that's all that matters. God, we're blessed to live in a land uh, that is so richly blessed. And God, it breaks our hearts to see um, what it was meant for is to spread the gospel throughout the world. And that's what it has done. The mission field has been great. In regards to how you use missionaries from this country powerfully throughout the world, uniquely think about it: Latin America, Asia, Europe, Africa. God, it's just it's amazing, and it was for a purpose. So, God, please, God, I pray that you would allow this message, Lord, to maybe be shared in a sense from word of mouth, mm -hmm. uh, with the meaning of it, uh, maybe the essence of it. Um, God, I just pray, please, God, that you would allow the warning to go forth and that these people in high, powerful positions, Lord, that you will remove them. Lord, Amen. remove them, Lord, God, because they're out to pervert, to destroy um, the liberty that you talk about in your word, the freedom that you talk about in your word. God, freedom, liberty is pure. It's holy. The word is meant to be holy. It's meant to be not perverse. And that's what the enemy is doing. They've changed the meaning throughout. And it's gotten even greater, Lord. Mm -hmm. It's gotten even more perverse. Mm -hmm. What what is what, what what I taught on uh, on the other the other um, the last teaching, Lord, is what it, mm -hmm. it's like good is evil and evil is good, mm -hmm. bitter is sweet and sweet mm -hmm. is bitter. It's just it's, it's where Jesus. that's where we're living in. But God, please, God, I pray that that you would allow, Lord, we pray that you would allow, just like you have with certain organizations that have lost a lot of their uh, followers, uh, Lord, I pray that we just bring them down to nothing. Mm -hmm. God, I pray that they would close the doors, yes. never to be able to broadcast again. Please, God, please. God, we don't want to, we don't want the same old, same old, Lord. We want holiness. We want, we want righteousness. Not self righteousness. We we want love of God. We want love uh, of Christ. We want the love of what the true essence of uh, of what family is. Lord is missing. There's such uh, disruption within culture because of the lack of fathers, the lack of the family unit, and they are blatant about that whole belief system that it doesn't need to be there. It's all about what they want to impose upon the world. Socialism, communism, um, liberalism. Mm. There is Jesus. no, there is no truth. God, that's what we're. That's what we're. This our generation is up against. And uh, Lord, I pray that people who are even older than I are, Lord, that they would call to remembrance their days, mm -hmm. the times that they lived in, Lord, and how their mom and dad took them to church. And that all the neighbors went to church. Mm -hmm. Lord, it was a special time during Sundays. It was a special time of fellowship. It was mm -hmm. a special time of gathering together. Lord, let us get back to that time. Lord, pray and ask, Lord, that you guide us as we go into a time of prayer. That you ought to be praised. Mm -hmm. Lord, show us how to pray. Teach us how to pray. In Jesus' name. Lord, I just uh, feel like I'm bursting.